Hi, I'm Kristen Arnett, founder of GreenBeautyTeam.com. A lot of you write in asking how to do makeup when you're over 50. So I thought I would use the face of my just turned 50 friend, Leah Griffith. She's an incredible paper artist who is a DIY craft maven. You've got to check her out at leahgriffith.com. So this is the finished look and we're going to rewind and I'm going to show you all the steps I did to go from our no makeup before mm -hmm. to this gorgeous <laughs> over 50 after. I want to know exactly what it is about doing makeup for women over 50. What's the difference? What do you think about? Yeah, it's well, there's a big difference because when you're over 50, you can't get away with just doing like some lip balm and mascara anymore. Mm -hmm. So there's a real balance between wearing enough makeup but not going so extreme that you actually make yourself look older. Mm. So I want to know about this stuff you're putting on my face. Yeah, I'm just putting a really beautiful, all natural, rich moisturizer on your face. It feels so good. Yeah, it's this is amazing stuff. Yeah. Um, it smells good too. Yeah, that's the wonderful thing about natural products is that it feels good on your skin. It's actually nourishing. Mm -hmm. And then you get that wonderful botanical smell. But I'm putting on a rich moisturizer for you specifically because you do have drier skin, which mm -hmm. is pretty common for women over 50. Okay. And you want to make sure your skin is extremely well hydrated before you put makeup on and then kind of let it soak in. So put that on while I'm drying my hair. Let it set for a minute. Yeah, especially while drying your okay. hair because actually the blow dryer can dry out your skin further. So make mm -hmm. sure you're doing layers and layers of moisturizer if you have really parched skin mm. during the winter time in particular. Okay. All right, step two in doing your face is choosing a lightweight foundation that really has the perfect color for your skin, which means nothing too light. I see a lot of times the mistake women make, particularly who are a little bit older, is that they choose a foundation that's too light because they're afraid of having that sort of orange fake foundation look. Mm -hmm. But if you go too light, you will make yourself look like death. <laughs> Don't want to do that. <laughs> no. You know, you can put your foundation on with your fingers. In mm -hmm. fact, sometimes that's really the best way to do it. So you melt the product into the mm -hmm. skin. In this case, because I'm applying it to you, it's a little bit easier right now using a brush, but I really want you to be comfortable taking your fingers and just very lightly going over your face. But just remember that fingers wipe makeup away. Mm -hmm. So if you're wiping too hard, you'll end up with all your makeup gathering in one place and actually taking it off the skin. Okay, so do you pat it like just with your... You can pat it mm -hmm. or just use like a very um, light pressure and then move it in different directions. Mm -hmm. So you're not just doing one constant motion in the same way. Okay. Yeah, and the other thing about putting your foundation on, which is important, is to get it down in this little patch right here because most women have been using sunblock for a long time, which is great because it preserves your skin from you know looking older mm -hmm. and having all those sunspots, but then you get this sort of white area and it looks a little strange when you do a whole nice face of foundation and then you've got like a white stripe. Mm -hmm. I like to do just a little bit of concealer under the eye before I start the rest of the makeup, but we're really gonna perfect everything once we have all of your eye makeup done. So why do you go back afterwards? Well, because a lot of times you'll get fallout from eyeshadow or maybe you'll remove it during the process of makeup application on the eyes. Mm -hmm. So you've got to finish it off at the end. That makes sense. It does make sense, but a lot of people just never think to do it. Mm -hmm. okay. Until they look in the mirror and there's a black spot on their cheek. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's happened. Well, and also if you don't conceal under your eyes and you get shadow fallout, mm -hmm. you look older and more tired. Mm. I'm gonna mix in just a little bit of concealer, close your eyes, and go right onto your eyelid. And what you'll notice is that there's usually a lot of redness or veins showing through, particularly if you have such transparent skin like you do. And just by evening out that area, it makes a huge difference in how awake and honestly it pops your eye color. It looks mm -hmm. really gorgeous once you do that. Yeah, it makes a big difference. Here, you can look mm -hmm. in the mirror and see. Can you see the difference oh, yeah. yourself? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It does yeah. make my eyes look brighter and younger. Mm -hmm. And younger. <laughs>
Yeah, it also creates a really nice base for any eye color that you're gonna put on top of this. Because when you have red and purple from the veins and mm -hmm. whatever's going on in the eyelid, mixing in with your eye color, it doesn't show as true as you really want it to. That makes sense, yeah. What do you do in crafting world to create bases? Sure, you paint it white first. You it's kind of right. the same thing, but you don't paint it white, paint it flesh tone. Mm -hmm. White is way too harsh. It's, that's where we're talking about going too extreme with makeup for somebody who's over 50. You start putting colors like white and black in really harsh ways on the face, and it doesn't look mm. soft and pretty anymore. Right. All right, I am really curious to see what colors you pick. Yeah, I think that's a big concern for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously I have way more colors than this to choose from, but I'm starting with such a basic color that looks just like your flesh tone okay. to put a base on your eye. I don't think color is as important when you get over 50 in terms of like, can you wear blue or purple? You, you want to keep things soft and as if they're tones that naturally existed on your face and then add a little bit of pop and color and life from there. Mm, okay. That's the fun thing about beauty is that you're not locked into any color. It's not permanent. Mm -hmm. It's not even like coloring your hair. You take it off if it doesn't work mm -hmm. or blend in another color. I mean, I'm sure you do something similar in crafting. Absolutely. Yep. Mm -hmm. So this is where it gets a little technical and a little hard for women. And I'm going to make this really easy for you and actually let you see it in the mirror. I'm just using a very mid-tone gray color to define your crease. And the mistake a lot of women make is that they take their eyeshadow, look in the mirror for me, they take their eyeshadow and they start pulling it down mm -hmm. because when their eyes closed, it seems like you wanna stroke this way with your eyeshadow, but that'll just pull your eyes down. So be very careful that you're keeping your eyeshadow always moving up and in towards the center, never on a downward stroke. Okay. Can you see how that's adding definition to your eye? I can. But it still looks like a natural shadow on your mm -hmm. face, and that's the beauty of gray. We'll add in some other colors from there, but this is where we're starting. Okay. And basically, it's a shape similar to a seven, if you want to think of it that way, mm -hmm. to keep everything moving up towards the brow area. And it's a very soft windshield wiper motion in the center. And you kind of want to use a fluffier brush that's made for the crease that's a little bit rounded. And yeah, and to be honest, there are stages of makeup where you're going to look a little weird. You kind of have to stick with it until you get to the stage where it's all finished. All together. Okay, look a little bit ahead for me. Um, let's see, look sort of straight into that line. And I'm going to curl your lash. So we're going to get right here at the base. Are we good? Mm -hmm. Am I pinching you? Not yet. Okay, three, two, one. This is something a lot of women skip, and you cannot skip yeah. this. Okay, this, I need to go buy some of those. Yes, you do, mm -hmm. some of those. You need one. I need one. You don't need multiples. <laughs> There's not one for a different eye, for a different day. You just need one. Okay. And replace it every couple of years. All right. And here's another thing. You know you're doing it wrong if this part of the curler is pushing into your cheek. We're gonna do eyeliner next. Yeah, eyeliner is tricky because I don't want it to look too harsh. Exactly. It needs to be soft. Yes. So teach me how to do it. I'm doing it. <laughs> okay. We're gonna start with a gel eyeliner All right. in black mm. because you have really dark hair. For somebody with lighter hair, you wouldn't wanna go black right away. Okay. But we're gonna do black and then we're gonna soften it with a shadow. Okay. Because you need that density next to your eyelashes to make them look really nice and thick mm. and full. This is always a lot easier to do on somebody else than it is to do on yourself. I mean, even I struggle with this. So the trick is to get as close to your lash line as absolutely possible and just use little like skipping motions. It doesn't have to be a perfect line to mm -hmm. start. And then, okay. and then make sure, look in the mirror, and make sure that when your eyes open, you're not taking your eyeliner down again with mm -hmm. that eye skin because it'll just keep pulling your eye down. Mm -hmm. You really wanna stop right before the last lash. Open your eye, look in the mirror, and then take your brush, if you're using a brush or a pencil, whatever you're using, and go the opposite direction down in towards the lash, oh. creating a wedge. And that way you never risk that your eyeliner goes this way. You're gonna have this beautiful upturn. Mm -hmm. 
Another mistake I see a lot of women make is that they take their eye and they just yank it from here to like the edge of their forehead. Like this? Yes. <laughs> don't do that. The reason you don't want to do that is because you're really compromising the delicate skin in that area more than it needs to be compromised. And when you stretch your eye back out, you know, we talked about gravity, but also mm -hmm. collagen and elastin in the eye area may not spring back as quickly. So you're going to end up looking a little funny when your eye makeup finally kind of works its way back into place. Yeah. It seems like if you pull it, you're putting it someplace where it's not going to be when you let go. Exactly. So be mm -hmm. delicate. You can pull mm -hmm. a little bit, but notice how delicately I'm touching mm -hmm. your eye. I think what I see a lot too is like on Instagram and YouTube, people mm -hmm. doing things like putting scotch tape on their face and doing these perfect lines. It's very intimidating, especially mm -hmm. if you don't have an eye that's youthful and with a lid like that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really work. Like I, I can never wear cat winged eyeliner and I don't think that that should be the one standard. But what we're doing here is we're creating an effect where your eye moves up and that's really kind of a more wearable daily way to do that cat, cat eyeliner. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I, I think I'm a little old for cat eyes, <laughs> unless I were in costume, <laughs> right? Well, you know, it could be part of your eccentric new look, Okay, <laughs> <laughs> but we won't do it today. No. I'm going to go back with the gray that I put on in your crease area mm -hmm. just to soften the black. Okay. Because the black line didn't need to be perfect, but we need it to be dense. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of eyeliner that I'm not happy with. It's not as straight as I'd like it to be, okay. so I'm just going to take this itty bitty little tiny that is so small swab where it's do you get those tiny muji okay oh right yeah yeah and mm -hmm. they're really nice because they're very tight and they allow you to get very precise okay so you could just use something like this to clean up anything that you did that you wish you hadn't done but always smush it back into the direction you wish it were don't start just wiping down your face because you're going to end up with a mess mm, okay so you kind of went backwards. Yes, because mm -hmm. I pushed it right where I wanted it to gotcha. go. Okay. okay, back to the gray shadow with a little brush that's kind of flatter. Mm. Are we doing the trombone over 50? Yes, we I are. Think. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Where's my glasses? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, and if you need a magnifying mirror to do your makeup for your eyes, ah. absolutely get one. Okay, I'm getting one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But don't spend more time in that magnifying mirror than you need to because it's mean and evil. Okay. Nobody should be looking at that, like with every pore, everything. Not even a 20 something. No. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Okay, so taking the gray shadow and I'm just going to buff it straight over the black line that we made. And actually, this time I'm not going as far into the lash line. I'm gonna let that be nice and dense and black right at the last line. So it's kind of like I'm going a parallel line just on top and slightly above. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah, and that softens it quite a bit. You can see oh, yeah. how it gives that mm -hmm. little bit of blurred effect. I like it. So you have the eyeliner and then softened over my eye. Anything under the eye, do we stay away from that? Well, it kind of depends how dark and how many bags you have. Okay. <laughs> but a little bit of definition is good, and kind of the rule of thumb mm. is you want it to be about two shades lighter under your eyes. Okay. You don't want to go as heavy as on the top of your eyes, or you'll shut your whole eye down, and you'll make yourself look really like you've been punched. <laughs> so are you using the same color? Yeah, I'm going to use the exact same color and this little straight brush and keep it nice and soft. So I'm going right up against the lashes, mm -hmm. but I'm allowing it to just fade slightly under, and that's what'll give it that more open, soft effect. Look in the mirror. Okay, yeah. yeah. It doesn't shut it down, it actually exactly. opens it up. You know, sometimes I take my finger and I kind of mush the shadow a little bit too. Okay, look in the mirror. Nice. Boom, you've got eyes. Boom. <laughs> For now, I'm going to leave your eyeshadow alone. I'm going to do some brow, and then I'm going to do something really weird with this brow pencil. Okay. <laughs> I'm looking forward. You've got actually a lot of brow for a woman over 50, which is amazing because a, most women have over-tweezed, over-waxed you know, waxed 
particularly if they were alive in that whole 70s era of, right, no brow. Right. But you're lucky. You you have your brows. Did you overpluck them and they grew back, or you just never overplucked them? I never them? overplucked them. I grew up in the deep woods of Idaho, where more like a bear is better. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> No, I, I, I didn't learn how to pluck my eyebrows until my 30s. Oh, and then you didn't overdo it, which is amazing. No. So I, I feel very lucky because what's in right now, and has been in for a long time in fashion, I can't tell you how many runway shows I've done in you know New York, Milan, Paris, where we've just been making these models' brows huge. Mm -hmm. So that's really the fashion, and it's not going anywhere. Plus, when you have a larger brow, it looks more youthful because as you age, you lose brow hair. A lot of the things we do with makeup and the tricks that I'm showing you aren't just because we wanna put stuff on your face. What we're really doing is adding back that youthful glow or the youthful color and emphasis to the features that you know you had back when you were in your early 20s. We're not it's gonna... never the places that you want to lose the hair, right? Right. I'd be, hey, if I never had to shave my legs again, I'd be super happy. Why can't all my hair just go off my legs? That would be really good. Yeah. yeah. And go into your eyebrows. <laughs> we could start a whole new crafting where you just shave. <laughs> and and you... glue them on? Yeah. They, yeah. they did that back in the Victorian era. No. Yes, they used mouse pellets, mouse skins, and they would glue them onto their face. Because they were putting so much of that whitening uh, lead uh -huh. on their face that they would lose all their hair because they were poisoning themselves. Oh, goodness. And then they would take dead mice and clip it and use them as eyebrows. That's a bit of makeup history right there. Yeah. Because we think that we've always done these super crazy things to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Actually, we've been doing crazy things for a long time for beauty. And now that's why I specialize in natural, organic, and clean because what I really feel like what we're putting on our face can get absorbed into our body. I mean, yeah, yeah. Look at all the true. women that died from putting the lead whitening stuff on their face. Mm -hmm. The other thing that women tend to do wrong with their eyebrows is that they spend all their time right here and they just color in these dark little caterpillars right there. You really want to emphasize the arch because that's what creates lift on the eye. See how when we look at your, your arch mm -hmm. and we pull it up the whole eye goes with it. All right. That, my darling, is your makeup Botox. Okay. <laughs> toxin-free makeup Botox. Totally toxin-free. I like it. It's mascara time. Okay. <laughs> this is the part that seems to, I don't know, freak people out for some reason. They're worried they're going to stab themselves, get it everywhere. They don't get the look they want. Here's the trick. It gets clumpy. Okay. Yeah. Oh, the clumpy thing. People are really worried about clumpy. Clumpy's in, by oh. the way. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. But you don't need to do no, it no, just because no. it's in. Okay. So look down, and what you want to do is start at the base of your lash and slightly wiggle. You know they make vibrating mascaras to recreate this effect? Really? But for free, you can wiggle your own hand. <laughs> Sometimes you end up with little clumpies or things that you don't want on your ends of your eyelashes and all you gotta do is take your fingers and just sort of peel it off. Okay. Don't pull your eyelashes out because at over 50, they're precious. They are. Keep every <laughs> single one of them. So what about the lower lashes? Lower lashes, kind of the same idea of what we were talking about with eyeliner. You really don't want to be putting a lot of mascara underneath. You're gonna draw emphasis to anything that's darker. Okay. But look up. Just kind of touch the mascara wand right onto the lashes, and that way it stays nice and soft without getting overly done up. And I tend to do it at the end of applying the upper lashes. That way there's not so much on the brush. Eyelashes make a big difference. They do. And you can go back with another coat on the mm -hmm. top, but not the bottom. So after I turned 50, I decided to stop getting eyelash extensions, which mm. I had gotten for about four years because they were hurting my eyes and my eyesight is so important. Yeah. I'm starting to have to wear glasses. Aha. Uh -huh. So wearing mascara is new again. Yes. And it does scare me a little. Okay. Well, I think the scariest thing about mascara after you've done eyelash extensions, which are really a big effect, mm -hmm. is that you're gonna get it on and it's gonna look clumpy and fake and it's gonna take too long. So you just have to go on stages. And it's messy when you take it off. It can be, mm -hmm. unless you have a really nice just coconut oil at home. That's what I use. There yeah. you go. That's all you need yep. to do. Break down the oil and the mascara, wipe it off first, and then mm -hmm. cleanse your face. Okay. 
You didn't even ask me what the weird thing I was going to show you with the brow What are you going to do? What are you going to do? <laughs> because it's already a natural color that shows up on your face, mm -hmm. I'm going to use it to add a little more emphasis to your under eye area that looks totally natural and really pops your eye even more. Okay. You just want to keep it in the middle portion of your eye. Don't go out to the outer corner and don't go all the way to the inner corner. It's just adding a little bit more dimension. Again, that looks natural and soft. Take a look. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you think? I think it looks natural and soft. <laughs> <laughs> That's because I paid you to say that. I know, I'm not used to it, so I, you know. It's I different for you. I don't usually wear this much makeup. I think that is mm -hmm. true for a lot of women out there. They're not used to wearing makeup on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So then you put a little bit on and it's like, oh, it's yeah. too much, it's scary. But you know what? Sometimes you have to put it on and live with it. Look at yourself in some different lighting, some different mirrors, and really assess. Because mm -hmm. we get so used to seeing ourselves That's one certain. way. And then as soon as that changes, if you do an eyebrow, you do some eyeliner, yeah. I mean, it just is like, the biggest change in the world, whereas, you know, your friend might not even notice and might just be like, oh, you look so young and fresh today. Well, look at yeah. you. <laughs> this is the thing that sets apart people who just normally do their makeup mm -hmm. and what professionals do. We're going to conceal now under your eyes after we've done your eye makeup and a little bit more on other areas of your face. Okay. So how is it working, you know, every day you work with these 20 year olds, 18 year olds, oh, models, 15, 16 15, year olds. Okay. And they, they have perfect dewy skin. And then here I come. <laughs> Let me just stop you right there. No, they do not. Uh, well, they look like it when you're done. Look up. Yeah. Um, a lot of these girls aren't getting enough sleep. They're not getting proper nutrition and it's not because they're anorexic. It's because they're girls, yeah. you know, and they're kind of traipsing all over the world and you know, some of them just, what, what did you eat at 15 and 16 years old? Let's I, be honest. I didn't drink enough water. I know that. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. there's this, there's this myth that models look perfect. If that was true, I wouldn't have had a job for the last 10 years. I'm just using concealer to kind of sculpt, you know, that whole contouring Kardashian thing. Sure. Uh -huh. That's a terrible idea for older women. Contouring just adds this really hollow sucked in look. I mean, kind of like a skeleton, mm -hmm. which is the opposite effect of looking youthful. So you want to add back in that sort of like bouncy, radiant, youthful look. Freshness. Yeah, okay. the freshness. Yeah. You know, a lot of people use makeup to add the radiance in by putting sparkle on their uh -huh. face. Mm -hmm. And you want to limit the amount of sparkle on your face. <laughs> because when I came in here, you had glitter everywhere. Well, that's... <laughs> That's just because of my business. <laughs> I didn't put it on on purpose. No. Yeah, I, I did know that matte makeup is better. Mm -hmm. You know, eyeshadow, matte eyeshadow versus a sparkle eyeshadow is better for my age. Is that correct? It is correct. You do have to be careful with too much matte. Okay. So it's like a, a nice balance. That gray shadow that we put on your eyes mm -hmm. has a very sophisticated sheen to it, but it doesn't have sparkle. Gotcha. Okay. Sparkle is for the 20 year old. <laughs> okay. We'll leave it for them. <laughs> I know you've got a birthmark right here. Mm -hmm. It probably looks bigger to you than to anybody else. So you don't want to spend a ton of time unless you have it to color correct and very precisely cover over it. Okay. Just Put some concealer on it and move, move on, on with your life. Okay, I like that. It seems like something I don't have more of as I age is time. I have less. <laughs> you have less time. Just skidding towards the grave. <laughs> no, I don't mean it that way. <laughs> I'm in in my day. I'm a busy woman. I'm kidding. I know. Well, it's nice to be able to have some tools in your back pocket for when you want to look polished and professional, maybe have a special occasion or mm -hmm. you're just doing something quick for every day. That's right. what this makeup is. It's okay. not, you know, red carpet glamour. I'm using a very small fluffy powder brush mm -hmm. with your powder foundation to go just in areas that are a little bit needing of some mattifying effect. The reason I want you to do it this way is so that you don't get a big powder brush and just start making your face really matte because mm -hmm. that'll take all the youthful radiance out. That makes sense, yeah. So when did you start getting into natural? 
makeup, the green beauty. Yeah, that mm-hmm. was, gosh, uh, I was, it was uh, about six years ago. Mm-hmm. And I met a model who was the first person to talk to me about toxins and cosmetics. I was using the standard stuff everybody was using, but I noticed backstage at the runway shows that a lot of the models started having allergic reactions to that makeup mm. and they could no longer tolerate it. So I started putting it together, you know, why were they having these reactions and started doing a little more, more research about the ingredients and the harsh chemicals. And as I learned, I saw that by using those on myself, my skin cleared up. I had been struggling with acne. Oh, gotcha. And then I started replacing my $30,000 makeup kit piece by piece with natural products that now I can get to work just as well as anything I used backstage back then. Mm -hmm. Are you tired yet? Mm -mm. Good, because now we're going to add color and sunshine to your face. (laughs) Make me look tan. (laughs) Well, (laughs) I live in Portland. (laughs) Yeah, we're going to keep it realistic. Okay, good. Good. Is that thing no, that no fake and bake here? <laughs> no fake and bake. Is that thing that I was I was telling you about before, in terms of older women avoiding color on their face and mm. going too pasty? You just you've got to add in some of that color so that you look like you're not a cadaver. <laughs> okay. So we have a little bronzer going on. Is that what we're doing? Yeah, it's a matte bronzer. So no glitter. No glitter. This is just for healthy glow. Mm-hmm right on the cheeks, a little bit into the hairline. That's really important, especially if you're starting to look like you have thinning hair, which you don't, but some women do. And it always helps a little bit under the chin, especially if you start to have a waddle going, which you don't. (laughs) The nice thing about cream blush is that if you've got dry skin, it can just look like a tint and not another layer of Mm -hmm. a mattifying powder. The difference about where I apply this versus where I applied the bronzer is that it's just right here, kind of on the apple of your cheek. If you were to smile, it's on the outside Mm -hmm. portion and it goes just up a little bit into the eye area known as your ocular bone. Okay. (laughs) When you put your blush on a little bit higher up like this, Mm -hmm. you can see it actually plays off your eye color and it sort of gives lift to your entire cheek area. Okay. And the cool thing about a multi-use cheek color is that Mm -hmm. you can put it on your lip too. Uh Aha. That's the beauty of natural. Mm Mm-hmm. And I know you tend to really like kind of a darker, more Shiraz color of lipstick. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna start here and then we can always add to it. You've got smaller lips Mm -hmm. and the darker you go with your color, the smaller they look. There you go. You know that, That's and yet you do it. That's <laughs> See, we get used to a look, right? I know. That's what we were talking about before. Yeah. You get used to a look, and you just kind of stick with it, stick with it. But if you want to look fresher, you got to add fresher color back onto your face. Okay. That's right. why you're here. <laughs> look. Look in there. Do you hate this lip color? I don't hate the lip color. I would say I would prefer a more defined lip. Cool. We can add lip liner on top of that. Okay but we're starting with that color. All right. All right. Now here's another tip, particularly if you have thinner lips, is to make sure that you start in the cupid's bow and round everything out. Don't make little sharp points. The sharp points are those extreme lines on the face that will age you. You wanna add that plump, luscious little lip thing. And when you do the under part of your lip, it's the same idea. You can go a little bit under and really define that area. Don't be afraid of going slightly outside your lip line. Everybody's lips are slightly asymmetrical. Everybody's face is slightly asymmetrical. So you're always trying to create balance Mm -hmm. in your face. It's never gonna be equal. I think that um, as women age, our lips get smaller naturally. Absolutely. Yeah, and I will not do the fill. I won't do it. Yeah. That's a choice for everybody, whether or not you're gonna do injections Mm -hmm. and surgery and all of that. I think that there's a lot makeup can do and that's why I really try to teach that first so that you don't have to go under the knife and risk yeah. doing things that are more medical procedures. Right. I think we're in a good place. Is there anything that you see that you want more I of or less of? I would put lip gloss on. Oh, would you? Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I like, I like my lips to not feel dry. 
Absolutely. Yeah. So you, for you, you want to find a lip gloss that's a little bit on the stickier side rather okay. than the slipperier side because the slipperier ones will just go straight into the fine lines. Okay. You don't have mm -hmm. a lot of them, but lip gloss moves. Okay. Just lightly smush. There you go. All right, take a look. That Happier with the gloss? Yes. Good. So you spent a while, you taught me how to do this. How long should I spend? Should is a relative term, right? So okay. it depends on how long you really have and how quick you are at doing all of this. Mm -hmm. This is more like a 10 to 15 minute makeup, but if you only had five minutes, you could certainly subtract some steps okay. and focus on what's most important to you. It just won't look like this at the end. So what, what would be most important? The eyes? I think evening out the skin tone. Okay. Mm -hmm. Concealing under your eyes, mm -hmm. adding some definition to your brow, and mascara, for and if sure. I did that, okay. And a little lip gloss. Of course a little lip gloss. <laughs> okay. But that's like as you're running out the door. Right. right. <laughs> that doesn't even count in your well, five I think minutes. that's doable. It is yeah. doable. All right. Well, I'm going to have to rethink every day. This is, you know, training an old dog now. <laughs> I'm like, where is she going with this? <laughs> I know. I, we keep having that old reference, and that's so not fair. Because 50 is the new 30. Hello. 50 is, okay, well, <laughs> let's put it this way. 50 is not old. No. You know, and you want to look in the mirror and you want to look like how you feel, which mm -hmm. is, I'm going to assume because you're Leah Griffith, dynamic, powerful, smart, <laughs> interesting. And that's what good makeup can help sure. with. It can help you look more polished. It can help you really feel like how you mm -hmm want to feel right and something I took for granted forever now I have to work a little bit harder yeah yeah but that's okay that's it can okay. be fun and you can play sure I like it good thanks so much for watching if you like this video give us a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and for more healthy beauty advice exclusively from the pros who know go to greenbeautyteam.com